Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. In a world where rugged and reliable matters, Ruger stands strong. Celebrating 75 years of American-made craftsmanship, Ruger continues to set the standard for excellence in firearms. From the iconic 1022 to the American rifle and beyond, each firearm embodies precision engineering and our deep-rooted traditions. Join us in honoring a legacy built on strength, innovation, and the American spirit. Hey you guys, Christy Titus coming at you from Hunt Expo. We're at the Ruger Marlin booth with Tana Grenda from Bristol Bay Fitness and Retreats. And uh, I don't know if you guys follow this lady or not um, online, but her and her husband are um, pretty much the most badass people I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, living literally like the Alaskan bush lifestyle. Are you from Alaska? No, I'm originally from North Idaho. So how did you yeah. end up in Alaska? You guys moved there. Mm -hmm. I moved to Anchorage when I was 19 by myself. It was just this wild dream to be able to go and into this untouched land. And I had had my pilot's license at the time. So I think that's what drew me there was aviation is all Alaska, yeah. you know. So I moved to Alaska alone, didn't know a soul. As a 19-year-old kid. As a 19-year-old kid. <laughs> went to college in Anchorage to get my air traffic control degree. And then I drew like this doll sheep hunt the first year I was a resident and after that and I you know hunted in Alaska after that I was hooked I was like I'm never leaving mm -hmm. but then I ended up moving back to Idaho for a time to try to get into the aviation world and get hired by the FAA that's when I met my husband Adam and he had also flown in Alaska and we both just had the dream and we like left our degrees behind <laughs> and moved to Alaska about eight years ago full-time that's insane yeah. how long have you guys been married nine years Nine yeah. years. So right, yeah. like, okay, so right yeah. after, or right before, no, right after. Yeah, we, like, got married, and, and then, then we moved. did a seasonal year. Like, okay. we worked at a lodge for the summer, and then the oil field in the winter, and I was so miserable in the oil field. I said, I'm not wasting my time yeah. in my young years doing something that we hate. I don't care how much money we make. Yeah. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is horrible. And so we left and just took a huge pay cut and he got a flying job in King Salmon, Alaska. And that's where we moved and we've never left. <laughs> so that's yeah. awesome. We kind of did that with Wyoming. I went to Wyoming and I just built this like big, beautiful, like dream house in Oregon, which it was a beautiful home. Like the house was exquisite. Mm -hmm. And I saw the mountains of Wyoming and I called my husband and my parents and I was like, all right, we have to move because yeah. this is where we need to be. Mm -hmm. And because the hunting, you mm -hmm. know, the freedom opportunities, yep. the opportunities for us to do stuff as a married couple, the stuff that we want to do, you know, yeah. the backcountry stuff. Like you went to Alaska for flying. I wanted to be in Wyoming because I like riding mules. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, look, <laughs> there's no better place to do it than Wyoming, you mm -hmm. know, for backcountry excursions. And so, yeah, I mean, you have to follow your passion and your mm -hmm. heart. And, and that's really impressive. Yeah. So um, what's like a day in a life look like for you guys in Alaska? Depends if I'm home with the kids or if we're out of adventuring, but you know, we've got six kids, so that's a lot. <laughs> Which you guys, for the, for the record, all of you listening and watching, if you don't know, Tana and Adam have adopted now, well, you have five adopted children mm -hmm. and one new foster baby. Yeah. We're talking like little tiny 10 month old <laughs> baby. Um, yeah. And no biological children, correct? Correct. Yeah. And so you guys have a absolute servant's heart mm -hmm. um, and a capacity to love that, I mean, I would like to say I'm that nice of a person, but your capacity to love and be generous with your time and your treasure um, is really remarkable. Thank you. I mean, yeah. you don't see that. I, well, I mean, clearly I have a dog. <laughs> That's my capacity to love. It's like, oh, you have four legs. I love you. Uh, but for human babies, I mm -hmm. mean, like you guys are you're doing really wonderful things and, you know, taking in children that have had tough lives. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, and are and are probably tough. hard. You know, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. as well. It comes oh, with their yeah. own challenges. Yeah, it's definitely not easy. I don't think we're like crazy saints by any means. I mean, I used to look at people that took kids in for foster care and be like, I could never do that. Yeah, I could never do that. And you know, that's what people say about us now. It's just like once you do it, it's like. You can do anything. You're like, oh, I'll take one more. It's no big deal. <laughs> yeah. Six, eight. Like, What's the difference? Once you get past a certain number, it's just all the same. It's just kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, our kids are older now, so I've got, you know, four girls and now two boys. And my girls are all, like, 14, 16, like, teenage years. And so it's really fun now because they get to hunt with us. And then yeah. they're, like, babysitters. And then yeah. <laughs> so they can babysit and we can, like, go leave for a couple hours and come back and you know, overnights I still fly up a nanny or my my parents because we don't live near any they friends. Fly up their nanny. <laughs> yeah, yes, we did. We did so I could be here. This you're weekend. in the bush <laughs> when you're like, I'm gonna fly in my nanny, or you're rich, <laughs> and I ain't rich. So. <laughs> They're in the bush. <laughs> you can't be rich in the bush. You just everything costs so much. But oh my gosh, yeah. I can't imagine. So you know, having a 16 year old man, I remember my niece when she was 16. And they are sassy. Mm-hmm. They're sassy. I'm sure mm-hmm. in the bush they're still <laughs> sassy, though. Yeah. Just bush sass has got to be different than, like, normal sass. Yeah. They're like, I'm mad at you, Mom. I'm going to go sleep in my tent outside. I'm running away. <laughs> yeah. My girls are tough. They're probably tougher than me. They've been through a lot in their past. And, I mean, you saw it. Julia got her moose this year. And, like, just her grit and tenacity. I mean, she hiked four miles through the tundra yeah. to get that moose. And then I flew in to pack with them and help them out because Adam couldn't do a whole moose himself and you know she's 120 pounds and a moose quarter is 120 pounds yeah exactly and so I went in to help her and by the end of I mean she was just tired she's like oh my gosh this is when is this over you know and by the end of it I looked at her and I was like so what do you think you you did a whole moose we packed it out was that fun she's like actually packing is my favorite part I'm like yes That's really awesome. Because, like, you never know if your kids are going to love it or not. Well, and you, you know? can't force it on them. <laughs> no, Like, kids you can't. either embrace it or they don't. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think your kids are, they're going to, you know, embrace it. Is this 10-month-old baby, is this the youngest baby you've taken in? Yeah. Yeah. We took in a one-year-old five years ago, mm-hmm. raised him until he was three. He went back to his bio parents. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, yeah, and heartbreaking. So I remember yeah. that. It was really yeah. heartbreaking. It's like your child dies, really. Like, people yeah. don't get it till you go through it. But, like, when you raise a baby that calls yeah. you mom and dad, and then, and then all you, of a sudden they give you two days' notice and say, get ready, yeah. he's leaving, when they were moving toward adoption, and they yank him out, and you never see or hear from him again. It's like, it's the unknown, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like, okay. Ugh. My child's never there anymore. And it's like that connection and the bond you had with them, and they're just gone. Yeah. And foster care doesn't see it as that. They don't do any transition whatsoever. He didn't even know his bio mom. They literally flew her in and handed him to her. They walked on a plane and, and I never terrified. saw him again. Oh, yeah. He's screaming. It, it was like, it was the worst thing. Worst damn Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I can't <laughs> even imagine. Like, it makes me want to yeah. cry. Yeah. Like, it's thinking awful. about that. And and then for you guys, you know, you're just now, you know, stepping in to do that again and, and taking in this little tiny baby. And um, I got a puppy last week. <laughs> And this is, this is how little I can relate, but I got a puppy last week and I'd had her for a week and I had to bring her to my mom's and I was heartbroken leaving her Mm -hmm. with my mom. (laughs) And I can't imagine going through that, like with a human, you know, like that, you know, like, oh, I have to leave this baby and Mm -hmm. it's permanent and, Mm -hmm. you know, um, like the amount that that would be amplified. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think I'd ever come out of it. No. <laughs> you know, it just put me in a hole for many, many months. And, you know, now that we kind of healed a little bit from it, you know, we we said we'd never, ever, ever do it again. And here you are. And here I am. <laughs> We're doing it again. But it just, I, I've just come to realize that this is like my calling, I guess. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's kids that need help. And if I'm not going to do it, who will? And mm-hmm. I see the situations they come from yeah. and it's not good. It's yeah. not even close to good, you know, kids will die. And so to me, I'm like, well, I'd rather give them love and a good home while, while yeah. I can, whether it's for a day or for a month or for eternity. Mm-hmm. And outside of that, it's out of my control. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And you guys, um, you really bring your kids into everything that you're doing outdoors. Mm-hmm. Are your kids as involved in fitness too? They want to be. They're, they kind of have this 
I don't want to say lazy, but they grew up in a home where they just sat and watched TV and mm-hmm. ate ice cream. Yeah, the for like digital 10 babysitters. Years, literally. And so being active and like doing hard things has been really hard for them because they always want to take the easy way. And I, I'm sure a lot of kids are just like oh, that, you know, yeah. but so you have to keep pushing them and challenging them. But now my daughters are getting to the point where when they go hiking with us, they realize like how important it is to, to be, be fit. fit and to be strong. And so that's what I'm trying to teach them now is, is like, okay, let's go to the gym as a family and work out together mm-hmm. or let's go outside and go for a walk and you know, they always want to just be like, no, I just want to sit at home and do nothing. And I'm like, no, we're going. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a non-negotiable. Do you, you have don't a have gym a choice. In town? <laughs> we do have a tiny gym. Okay, well, yeah. that's good. I actually started training there in person when I first moved out there. It's a tiny little gym, but yeah. um, I mean, it's got a little of everything, and yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's free. Like seriously, our, our borough, which is our word for a county, um, they they manage it, and then they kind of hired me to manage it and just manage the memberships and stuff, but. Yeah, it's just like a, a 24-7 gym. So she, what un- she said <laughs> you know? just now is, oh, the gym is free, <laughs> but I work there also for free. So yeah. <laughs> your gym membership <laughs> pretty, is not free. Pretty much. <laughs> your gym membership it's actually like, costs you because <laughs> you're working. But yeah. That's okay. I don't have to, like, be there in person, though, which is no. nice. I can, like, do everything remotely. Yeah. And just, like, check on it. But, yeah, it, that's really nice to have. Yeah. Because I need that for my sanity. (laughs) But now that I have a baby, a lot of my workouts are like at home and they look like me holding the baby, squatting with the baby, doing presses with the baby, (laughs) doing planks with the baby on my back, you know, because he just is at that age where he just needs you more. Mm -hmm. And Yeah. Yeah, tiny. I can't even imagine. Like he's like 23 pounds right now. He's a little chunky native baby. And so, you know, he's a good little weight to kind of throw around and (laughs) work out with. So and sweet. he loves it. He just like laughs and smiles the whole time. So it's like my quality time with him too mm-hmm. is working out with a baby. Yeah. Well, my little dog last <laughs> week, I was doing planks and um, she would jump on my back and then jump off my back. And that was really fun. So I can relate. Yeah. In the dog mom <laughs> way, I guess. Yeah. Like not, not relatable, but relatable. I'm trying to. Like, yeah. But I, I, you see a lot of moms doing that with their babies and, mm-hmm. and you know, um, so are you guys on property or because you're trapping all the time? Yeah. Hence so Dick Bone Enterprises. Do you guys want to give anybody like the background on this? Like this is a thing <laughs> that Adam has going. Like yeah. it's a real like legitimate T-shirt thing now. I was it beyond yeah, T-shirts. It's, it's a business now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My husband quit his federal government job last, no, two years ago. And <clears throat> I kind of pushed him to do it. He was going to just kind of stay with it, even though he was miserable. And I said, uh, again, why are we going to stay in something yeah. and be unhappy when we can make a change? And I saw potential in him because he is a really funny guy. He's, he he's is a hilarious. comedian. If you guys aren't following <laughs> his social media, he is he makes fun of everybody. Like there's Even no... Even himself, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing <laughs> off limits, and yeah. which is great because, I mean, we're all worthy of being, like, making fun of at some yeah. point. Yeah. And he just, he doesn't care what anybody thinks. He's the no. kind of guy, he's so, so secure in himself, he doesn't care. Yeah. Like, if you said, Adam, I hate you, he'd be like, cool. Cool, don't care. I like myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He'd probably flip you off, but, you know, <laughs> he'd be like, whatever. And so um, he quit his job and wanted to kind of dive into kind of freelance marketing, the hunting yeah. industry, but really wanted to be a trapper and just hunt full time. That's what he wanted, open up his schedule. So we quit his job and... We had a really good trapping year last year. We got like 14 wolverine and like 25 wolves. And it was just a really good year. And we didn't really realize that wolverines and wolves had baculums or dick mm-hmm. bones. And so... Excuse <laughs> my crude. <laughs> I didn't know the official terminology. Baculum is the of official... Of the baculum. Uh, now we know. <laughs> baculum is the official <laughs> word. Oh gosh. If it's like a walrus, it's an usic. If you've heard of that. Okay. No, I haven't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So learn something new every yeah, day. Yeah, every day. And today is the day. I have a lot to learn about Alaskan uh, bone culture. <laughs> yeah. So he was skinning a wolf out one day and found one. He's like, what is that? And realized and put it on his Instagram as a joke and said, highest bidder gets this. And somebody bid it up to $105. Wow. And he was like, okay, maybe this is a thing. He had a bunch of wolf carcasses in the back and he went chopped off all the dick bones of them put them up for sale made like a thousand bucks on dick bones in a matter of a week that is unreal (laughs) like 
He didn't even clean him. But what a grip. <laughs> you're getting a dirty D here. You're not even getting a clean one. If you buy this, it's dirty. <laughs> um, this is like his new side hustle, yeah. like a real thing. And I mean, he was selling his furs and he sells his skulls. And he so. makes more on those than his furs. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does make I'm more on the furs. I'm joking, I'm joking. But it's the thing that is like his brand now, you know? Yeah. And we didn't really expect that. So was that. he trapping <laughs> full time then? All winter, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that's like his main yeah. revenue is trapping. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm kind of the main source of income. And he is doing the, the stuff now that I hope he surpasses me. Yeah. So that I don't have to work as much. Because I would love to be home with my kids and, <sighs> you know, just chill out. I literally feel like we're the same person. Because <laughs> we just had this conversation, my husband and I, where, you know, we moved to Wyoming. And I'm like, I don't want to travel so much. I want to be home more. And yeah. That's why we moved to Wyoming, so I don't have to travel to hunt as much mm-hmm. where I can hunt with my dad and my husband and our mules and yeah. like feel more connected to what I consider my family. Mm-hmm. And he w- wants to live out of a suitcase, and I'm like, all right, well, go guide. And mm-hmm. you can make more money, and you can guide. So we're, we're in the same <laughs> parallel right here, but different, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you eventually just get to the point in life where you want to be home and you yeah. just want to live your life and you yeah. don't want to worry about all the external factors and yeah. worry about the finances and the work and like traveling. Yeah, it can get exhausting. It is. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. Uh, that's really smart. So um, so he is now trapping and then doing the DBs. And, and they shed and, hunts um, and sell sheds. I mean, he yeah. just kind of does random. He's resourceful. Random yeah. He's a, he's a mountain man. He, he really is. He's a pretty small guy, too, so I'm not sure how he gets around. Yeah. <laughs> he's really easy to point out. Yeah, like, he's literally one of the biggest humans I've ever seen. And he's not even that tall. He's just, but like, he's broad. He's burly. And like he's, like, big. literally Grizzly Adams. Yeah. His like name's Adam, so, yeah, it yeah. works. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about your Bristol Bay fitness and retreats. So mm-hmm. when I met you, you were here with a team of awesome women. And you were coaching, doing nutrition programs, and, um, you know, not to, like, completely go off course because, you know, what you're doing with your kids and your hunting and all that stuff's awesome. But I do really want to talk about um, nutrition and fitness because um, it's, I have been through a big fitness journey over the last year coming yeah. from a competitive fitness background. And you're always talking about hormones. And I'm like, hello, you're speaking like my <laughs> hormonal love language right now because I'm like living all of the things you're talking about. And mm-hmm. you're coaching and consulting. So tell everybody that's <clears throat> watching and listening a little bit about what you're doing with that. Yeah. I mean, I started Bristol Bay Fitness the day mm-hmm. that our foster kids moved in. Like, I went from zero kids to three overnight. And a business owner. And then two more, the oldest two moved in two months later. And so I had started my businesses at that exact time. It was just this moment where I was like, I don't want to trade in person anymore. I don't want to trade time for money. I've got to be home with my kids. What can I do? And so I just basically swapped my fitness to everything's online and virtual. And I wasn't expecting it to grow like it did, but it was the year of COVID. Yeah, And so it kind of just skyrocketed and mm-hmm. everybody needed coaching virtually yeah. and it worked and I ended up hiring a team. And Do you so, still yeah. have the same team of girls? <clears throat> I do. We scaled back a little bit. One of them got pregnant, had a baby, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've got one assistant coach and then a life coach mm-hmm. on my team. And mm-hmm. with the three of us, we can pretty much handle mm-hmm. it. And yeah, we take on clients from all over the world. I mean, we train people in um, Africa, New Zealand, Australia. England, (laughs) all over the U.S. and Canada. And that's just really cool to me because it's expanding into, like, I live in a town of 400 people. You can only train so many people there. That's right. And I want to be able to help more and expand more and, like, reach more people. And it's my passion to help people, like, live a really healthy life Mm -hmm. and to be functional with what they want to do. So our biggest clientele is outdoors men and outdoors women, Mm -hmm. training them for hunting, getting them ready to hike and carry heavy packs and do that functional fitness. But then the internal side, like making sure that women are balanced hormonally, that they feel good, that they have Mm -hmm. energy and that they can sustain whatever they're doing for the rest of their life instead of just yo-yoing and doing fad diets all the time. Yeah. So that's my passion and my mission is to help more people to do that. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about like, what is the common guy he calls and says, I want to be like Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do they say? They're, they're, I mean, what's, what's Usually they have really a hunt. common, like, like, okay, like a very specific. Yeah. Like I booked a sheep hunt this fall and I need and to survive this. I haven't worked out in 10 years cause I'm a oh, busy professional, yeah. you yeah. know? 
that's that's a lot of our clientele yeah. you know yeah people so you start like a busy. ramp up like scaling program for mm-hmm. them and yep we and put on them on a workout program that is you know building from the foundation core strength up from that to endurance and being able to hike and carry heavy packs and hike 10 miles a day in the sheep mountains <laughs> and uh yeah usually like they really get to a point where they do their hunt and they're like, there's no way I could have done this yeah. if I didn't get on a program. And, but again, it's more than just a program. I mean, I don't mind programming for people and be like, here, here's some workouts, but I don't feel like people get the best results if they just work out. Like we've got to look at nutrition yeah. and we've got to look at your sleep and your lifestyle habits. Mm-hmm. And are you drinking alcohol every day and all weekend long? You know, <laughs> like it, it's all encompassing yep. and the workouts is just a tiny little puzzle piece. Yeah with the whole picture well and like your weight training i mean was it 30 <clears throat> or 40 minutes a day it's not your yeah. whole life it's not you know, oh yeah it's a small part yeah it's a tiny piece of yeah. your whole metabolism yeah. it's like what are you doing the other 23 hours yeah in the heart of the wilderness every step counts no matter where or what you're hunting on x hunt elite has you covered in the u.s and canada with offline capability land ownership 3d mapping and you can even access specialty courses hunt research tools and elite specific features no matter where you pursue the wild adventure is assured when you upgrade to elite for the ultimate hunting experience for me, sleep is so important. Um, <coughs> yeah. Of like, I've been, I'm on little sleep right now and I'm tired and I don't drink alcohol. I quit drinking alcohol a year ago. You did. Good for you. Uh, well, it just made me fat. So I was like, this is really dumb. Why am I doing this? I don't even like drinking. There's really so. nothing good that comes from it. If you think about it. <laughs> well, and I was just doing it for, to be social. To yeah. Be and that sounds so bad, but our culture, um, there is some degree of like peer pressure that goes with it, especially at these events. They're like, why aren't you having a drink? What's wrong? Are you pregnant? That was the other right. thing I was getting for a while because I had <laughs> I plumped up a little bit. People were like, oh, you have a baby in there? I'm like, it's a taco, actually. It's <laughs> a taco is in there, not a baby. Um, and uh, that's what's going on. So, yeah. yeah. I don't drink either. No. And I don't mind telling people. They're like, you want to drink? I'm like, nope. Water? Yeah. I'm good with water. I mean, when you look at how it wrecks not just women, but men hormonally. Yeah. And it literally breaks down muscle. I mean, there's so much science behind yeah. it. There's literally nothing good that it does for your body. So if like good on you, if you're just going to quit and not do it, yeah, you're putting no. your health in your body first. Well, before I got married, I never drank because being a woman in the hunting <clears throat> space mm-hmm. and coming to these shows specifically, I didn't want to be that single woman that was under the influence and put herself in a compromising situation yeah. where mm-hmm. I might drop my guard or do something that I might not should do. Yeah. <laughs> you might regret later. I'm like, I probably shouldn't do that. Uh, but I did because I was drunk. Uh, so I just never wanted to be that yeah. person, you know. And then my, my strong rule was nothing good happens after midnight. Mm-hmm. And so it, I've always had, like, even last night, I'm like, yeah. It's midnight, like we need to go. <laughs> it's bed because I need to sleep. Yeah. Um, but so those are some things that I really stuck to. But after I got married, I was like, oh, I'm married now. I can let my guard down and drink and have drinks because I'm with my husband. Mm-hmm. And I'm in like this safer space where I'm not going to be compromising myself. Yeah. You know, or, you know, having something misunderstood or whatever. So I started to drink and then we traveled Europe for three years eating. And I was like, you know, this is so fun. And now <clears throat> three years later, well, we've been together four. I'm like, okay, well, I, we, we went to Europe this year and I'm like, I've eaten all this food. Like the romance is kind of gone and the reality of I don't want to be overweight and out of shape is mm-hmm. stronger than the romantic allure of yeah. eating the food and drinking the wine. And you, you, know, you just real you have to realize at any point in a fitness journey is like, is it really worth it? Yeah. Like, is it how you feel doing that really worth mm-hmm. it? And I just went, you know, for me, like the spiral, like it wasn't worth it. Yeah. Like, Stop doing it. It was stupid. Good for you. you. Know? And um, I think that discipline is hard and people judge you for it. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you've had negative comments or people that aren't helpful, but I'm just like, good on you. Because my clients that get progress, they always get pushback from people. And it's it's not people that are disciplined in their routine and people that are really like have their health and fitness as a priority. It's people that wish they could and they can't. Yeah. And it's really hard because you're just 
I don't know what you say to those people. Usually well, I'm just like, well, this is my life. Like, <laughs> there's, <laughs> this like, is what for I want to do. <laughs> I had a lot of bullies online. Guys really? would be like, oh, you're getting <clears throat> fat. Your husband's not going to like you anymore. You're fat now. And I'm like. People ex- say that? Oh. <laughs> it was brutal. Like, you need to go on a diet. Like, I'd post something with my little mules where I'm, like, training them and doing stuff. And they'd be like, yeah, you're fat. You need to go on a diet. Your husband's going to leave you. <laughs> Like, I mean, people would be like harsh. I'm like, okay, well, this is really mean. And I think what did it for me though, um, when I, from trade show season last year, from January until the end of trade show season, I gained 12 pounds Mm -hmm. in two months. Like how did I, and I didn't feel like I was drinking that much, but now I look back on it and I was pretty intoxicated quite a few nights of the show season and I was drinking at least two drinks every night and then I'm eating all this food and and I wasn't exercising so I was exhausted and yeah. didn't feel good in the mornings you know and <laughs> yeah. I put on all this weight and I went home and my bilirubin levels in my liver were elevated and they put mm-hmm. me on a liver watch really my cholesterol was borderline high mm-hmm. my hormones were a disaster I was having hot flashes and night sweats and like I had no energy I was tired all the time And I'm like, okay, I have to figure this out. And I had went to some doctors before and they just kind of dismissed what I had going on. And anyway, I found somebody that helped me and listened to me and and I got my life straightened out, you know, and Mm -hmm. and things are back on track. But I mean, people have to know, like, if you're like me and you wake up like that, it's you. Mm -hmm. Like you have to do something about it. I wasn't going to do it for you, you know? Like, yeah. it's got to change. Mm-hmm. And and so then now people are, like, the opposite. Like, you you need to go eat a donut. Go have it. Damned if you do. Damned if you don't. Yeah, you so know. <laughs> so what, are the, what is the pushback you're getting? I don't really get pushback. I just, I mean, you know, I train a lot of people that make progress. And then, and then I train friends people. friends are jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Or they get people pressuring them, like you said at parties or whatever like oh you need to have a drink yeah. or oh it's okay if you eat this you, oh, you know it's the christmas holiday you, yeah. <laughs> you need to have these chocolates like you need to fatten up a little bit yeah. again you yeah. know and and not that just everybody that works with me you know gets really lean and toe because i work with a lot of people that are struggling with a lot yeah. of hormone stuff and gut stuff and so oftentimes we're not in a fat loss phase like sometimes we're in a maintenance phase where we're having to get their body to a healthy safe enough mm-hmm. place that they can lose fat And so that doesn't always happen right away. And I think women expect that a lot of times. Um, And so, yeah, you get both. But So let's talk a little bit about the gut health stuff. So everything we do or intake in our bodies is processed in our stomach first. And then we have that cellular uptake. Mm -hmm. Um, What, when someone's having a difficult time, what do you, what do you, what what is like the one, two, three step, like general speaking, right? Don't go detail, right? They need to hire you for that. But generally speaking, what do you see a lot? Generally speaking, cleaning up your diet quality. Yeah, processed so refined food. Cutting out processed refined food and focusing on whole foods. So for and you, increasing though, fiber. is that yeah. hard though? Because you're in Alaska, fresh food is not as easy to come yeah. by. I ship food in from Anchorage on a cargo plane once a week and pay a dollar a pound for shipping. So my grocery bill is high <laughs> yeah. because my shipping alone can be two to 300 bucks a week for fresh produce for my family. So when we look at going to Walmart and we complain, just smack us. <laughs> like yeah. we're complaining. And like we have that. four yeah. freezers of meat. Yeah. So we're good on meat. We don't buy meat. Yeah. And I probably still spend two or three grand in fresh produce and shipping every month that to have unreal. fresh food. But for me, it's worth it. Yeah. You know? The it's worth it family. to have a healthy family. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. So starting, but, you know, more processed refined foods. What about probiotics? Do you feel like people need to be on probiotics or it depends on the I person? I kind of veer away from that at first because not all probiotics are created equal. Yeah, exactly. But focusing on prebiotics and adding in, like, kimchi or, like, yeah. you know, Greek yogurt yep. and sauerkraut and, like, some of those natural prebiotic foods. Prebiotics, um, you know, help feed the good bacteria and so, yeah, there's certain probiotics you want to use if you have, like, an overgrowth, and there's certain you want to use when you don't. And so, like, that I would say work with somebody that knows what they're doing there's versus just taking a random pre- probiotic because it might actually make it worse. So don't you just know? work with somebody. <laughs> work with Tana. So if you're having gut issues. Uh, yeah. And then specialty. working on your hormones, too. I mean, so it's all encompassed. Generally and your stress. speaking. Stress like is a big one. Hormones. That's a really, like, when you say hormones, it can mean so many things. When, mm-hmm. What do you mean by, say, work on your hormones? What do you see with people? Thyroid. A lot. a lot of women are hypothyroid because they're not eating. They're skipping meals. 
mm-hmm. under eating high stress. Um, <clears throat> their estrogen, like high estrogen is a big one. So if you have hot flashes and yeah. uh, gaining weight, things like that. Um, low progesterone, very yeah. common with yeah. a lot of women. Yeah. 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 Low I testosterone, on, also very well, common. <laughs> I went on uh, pellet, testosterone pellets. Yeah, and, so um, did I. Yeah, and they're, they've changed my life. Mm-hmm. And Mine too. I, and I'm not doing any estrogen or progesterone, but just testosterone, which is so weird because how many women out there are thinking, like, you need testosterone, but it helped my hot flashes. Every and it helped woman my lose needs weight. testosterone. Yeah. 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 It is so important, and probably, like, 90% of people are low. <laughs> yeah. So. And don't know it. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, is medically, there's this range of low to high. Yeah. And it's so big. Ignore the normal ranges. It's so, it's such a big range. You have to look at yourself. So, you know, like for me, for a year and a half, I'm like, why am I sweating through my bed? Why am I gaining weight uncontrollably? Why do mm-hmm. I not have energy? And when people are like, oh, well, you're too young, you, you're okay, and they just want to, like, pass the buck. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I might be in normal range, quote, unquote, but I'm not, this is not normal. And so yeah. you have to be willing, you have to work with a health practitioner that is willing to look at your individual system and say, okay, yeah. this is not normal, in fact, mm-hmm. and it might be within normal, quote, unquote, range medically. Yep. But it's such a big range, maybe you need to run on the higher side for your testosterone yeah. or, like, that is an individual number. Yeah. And how old are you? I'll be 44 this year. And do you want to be compared to a 70-year-old female? No. Or a 20-year-old female? <clears throat> 20. I like that. I like the 20. You know? Yeah. But, like, yeah. seriously, the normal range is the huge range of the population and the average person. To me, I don't want to be compared to that. I mm-hmm. want to be compared to what's optimal for myself. Yeah. And they look at just labs, and they don't look at your symptoms yeah. in our Western medicine world. Yeah. And your symptoms trump labs. So... I found a practitioner that literally doesn't even care what my labs say. She's like, what symptoms do you have? And we're going to treat based on that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I ended up going on the pellet. And I had to go on progesterone too because my body just hasn't ever made progesterone. Mm -hmm. I have a very high stress life Mm -hmm. and I'm probably never going to not have a high stress life. (laughs) And so that's the number one thing with low progesterone, low testosterone is stress because it starts with your adrenals. And then from there, your cortisol is all a mess and then it suppresses your testosterone it suppresses your progesterone and then your estrogen's rising and then women are drinking alcohol and it raises estrogen more and then, and you, it just you, <laughs> then you end up like me and you won't and then, gain 30 pounds and then you feel like <laughs> yeah. crap all the time yeah and have low energy and you just yeah you're it's like not literally optimal. describing like, me like <laughs> that's why i love following you because you you humanized what i was going through Like, I suffered for almost two years before I found somebody that would listen to me. And I would follow your your stories and what you were talking about in in teaching and showing women's body types and talking about these things. And I'm like, it was validating. Yeah. Like, I'm not crazy. Yeah. This is not normal. I don't care what this person says. I should not be uncontrollably gaining weight. But I also shouldn't be drinking all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have to have some bit of accountability and take some responsibility on some lifestyle change Mm -hmm. um yeah but there's so many contributing factors to it the other thing i found for me personally is my b12 was extremely low a lot of people are mineral deficient and that's a problem because you have to have minerals to digest your food and be able to uptake it into Mm -hmm. your cells and so yeah it's just there's so many pieces to your health and you can't work on all of it at once but if you can work on the little pieces and and work on that like yeah b vitamins everyone's really low Mm -hmm. magnesium People are also really low. Yeah, vitamin you know, D, a lot vitamin of that. D, really low. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, um, and all of those things together can create just, you know, a much better situation. Like you said, where you feel like it's changed your life. So when you start talking to someone, you listen to them, and you're like, okay, it sounds like you have some hormonal imbalances. Let's get you with a practitioner, get some panels, and then you work kind of symbiotically mm-hmm. with what you're seeing in their panels, how their their success is going. So it's almost like a medically based. Mm -hmm. program it's not you're just not spitballing like hey let's just try to do target heart rate (laughs) cardio and see if you're gonna go you know what I mean like you're you're not just spitballing things out there you're like genuinely going in from a whole body approach to helping people achieve their fitness goals everything's custom yeah like every single person is different so the way I coach them the way their program looks like is different for them Mm -hmm. because I'm not gonna train you the same person I would train somebody else yeah because well, your yeah. life, your body, your 
schedule, your circumstances are much different than the next person. Yeah. There are a lot of Americans that understand the value of hunting, but we all know that right now, national support of hunting is extremely volatile. It seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. We need advocates working on our behalf in Washington, D.C. to defend our freedom to hunt. And thankfully, when we need it the most, we have that advocate in Safari Club International. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. I think that's one of the biggest factors for so many people, myself included, is stress. Mm -hmm. Like you keep talking about stress. My husband is always preaching me like you are so stressed out all the time. Like you have to like. It's the root cause of all problems. Yeah. It, I it, can it really like stressful. everything will tie back to stress. You have this problem ties back to stress. Yeah. And a lot of it can be either stress or trauma or PTSD, things from the past, childhood trauma. Like a lot of that can play into your health. Yeah. So it's hard sometimes because, you know, when it comes to training, you don't want to start somebody out and be like, all right, well, you have a lot of trauma. Like, we're going to have to work through that, but oftentimes they're going to have to at some yeah. point. And, and they're not going to be able to be fully healthy until they do. And just all of those things. Yeah. What do you think about, like, genetic <clears throat> predispositions? I think genetics load <clears throat> load the gun yeah. and your habits and your lifestyle pull the trigger. Yeah. So you have the ability to change. Yeah, and I would agree with that because, like, genetically, like, my body's like, I was like his workhorse like imagine like a big percher on and you take that plow <laughs> horse out every day and you work the crud out of that thing daylight to dark yep and you don't hardly have to feed it and it looks the same that's me <laughs> that's me i'm yeah. a workhorse yeah i am not a little arabian that you know you take on a few trips and gets down to skin and bones yep. and w blows away in the wind like my horse like my other horse at home like no i am i am like that plow horse that mm -hmm. like i can work and, and everybody is different in some capacity. And when you look at the genetics of wildlife or animals or species or like breeds within species, you know, we can, we can really relate like, well, that's bred for this. We don't look at people necessarily the same way, but we are the same. Yeah. I mean, we're still an animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. genetics, yes, they do play a part in it. Yeah. But your habits and your lifestyle are often or a big piece of that and how you manage your stress yeah. so on your retreat so you do this online consulting or virtual consulting is it through like facetime or what are you zoom calling yeah. people facetime zoom that sort yeah. of thing yeah mm -hmm. and okay. then i have an app that i run all of my programming through that they can have their food tracked in there and their workouts and their stats and their habits that they check off and so that's kind of like the system behind it mm -hmm. and then i'm their coach supporting them one-on-one -on -one. or Lindsay, my assistant coach and then my life coach works with people that aren't quite ready for that yet because they have a lot of mindset struggles or they have a lot of self-esteem issues or they have like really negative patterns mm -hmm. <laughs> that they have that's affecting their ability to be able to do a workout or their ability to even, you know, track their food because they're really struggling. So she works on like the trauma side of things um, and she's been a therapist for like 13 years. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. So you have a great team. <clears throat> yeah. 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 So you do that, and then you also host retreats. Yeah. And so that's that's one of the things I want to really focus and talk about and elaborate. Like, those of you watching or listening, um, not only can you get coaching from you and help from your team, but, like, you can join, like, this amazing fellowship mm -hmm. program that you've created. Yeah. Yeah. My passion is uniting women that are like-minded like us because I grew up with a bunch of boys <laughs> and I never really knew other women that hunted and were hardcore about it. Yeah. You know, I'd see the women that were kind of fake and I didn't really want to be like that. <laughs> you yeah. know, I wanted to like do the hardcore hunting yeah. 
And we see a lot more of that now. Like there's hundreds of women yeah. like us that are out there that are yeah. freaking hardcore. Yeah. And they could out hike a lot of men. Oh, for like, sure. Truly. Yeah. <laughs> because they have no quit. And uh, it's just, it's really cool for me to be able to bring those type of women together, show them that there's other women like them, yeah. connect them, and then also teach them yeah. and train them and bring in the right people to do that. Yeah. So where are your camps at? They're kind of all over the country because like originally, you know, I always imagined them just in Alaska, but now like you're doing a clinic in June in Idaho. And so talk about what you, what, you know, what does a clinic look like? Yeah. So I, well, up until this year, we've only done Alaska. Mm -hmm. Like that was my dream. There wasn't really anything else for hunting outdoors women in Alaska like that. So we go out in the bush. Like I take you in the middle of nowhere. And if you can survive a week with me out there, you can survive anything Yeah. because we're being dropped off. We're camping, we're backpacking. Um, we're dealing with the Alaska elements in the middle of nowhere, out of cell service, away from hospitals, away from the road system, you know, and it's a really life changing experience for a mm -hmm. lot of women because it helps them reconnect with themselves mm -hmm. when they haven't done that in a long mm -hmm. time. And so what are some of the exercises you're doing when you're out there? Well, Not like physically, exercises, yeah. <laughs> but also like mental. Well, the know. mental side is just part of it. Yeah. Like if you have a bad weather day or if it's windy, um, like last year we uh, had a weather day ended up staying a day later than we had planned and everyone missed their flights back home and so that was you know that changed things and it just challenges you mentally and, makes and there you was realize, probably like, people crying that were really upset and well they were upset and then they realized like nothing I can do about it there's nothing I can do about it like yeah. you just learn to surrender and I think that's the biggest piece of it and yeah. it's hard in the moment and after that you're like wow I really needed that yeah because I'm so used to controlling everything in my life and Alaska teaches you that like you have to like, surrender mm -hmm. and let go of the things you can't control and it really de-stresses you mm -hmm. um but a lot of it's really a lot of fun. I mean, we go backpacking. Um, we go on a full day hike. We do a full day of wilderness survival. So, like, we teach them wilderness first aid and shelter building and fire building. Um, we go fly fishing and have fun. We see bears all around us. So that's mm -hmm. a little piece of the mental part of, like, are you mentally tough when you see a bear walking by your camp? <laughs> How do you handle that? And just getting people to be confident to be able to go in the wilderness on their own. Because they did it without their husband. Yeah. And they're like, wow. Yeah. I did that by myself. I mm -hmm. built that fire by myself, you mm -hmm. know, and it's it, so, yeah, it's really, really cool. And this year we decided to do one in Idaho as a big event because one, it's expensive. Yeah. Like my retreat in Alaska, because we're doing so many bush flights, like getting a float plane. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. <laughs> getting out to where I am is not cheap. And the food and everything is not cheap. No, flying and everything <laughs> is 10 times more up there. Yeah. And it's really like, I would say not, you don't have to be advanced. We've definitely had beginners, but I wanted something entry level for a lot of people. And also just something for everyone to gather together and, and be easier to get there. And so we're doing an event in Southern Idaho this June, the 10th to the 15th. I'm trying to get you to come. Yes. <laughs> you well, come. and I, I'm hoping, I think if, I think if I can drive yeah. to that other event and do it in time, I can do it. Yeah. yeah. That would be really cool. Cause I'm going to bring in over 20 instructors from the industry that are really awesome. So what are you, experts what are in that the, field. so explain, elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah. What are, the, what are you teaching there? So there's going to be five full days and each day has a theme so day one the theme is wilderness safety and survival so that people can then make good decisions throughout the week as we're camping but um you know anything from we've got um first aid for horses we've got a workshop on that and we've got like six different workshops and everyone can choose two so you can come in and like pick and choose what you want to do but you know fire building shelter building i think laura zara is going to come out there and teach that and wilderness first aid so yeah that's the theme that day I can't like list them all off the top of my head. <laughs> They're all on my website. The second day is shooting. So we're going to do handguns, rifles, short range, rifles, long, long range. range. Um, and then shotguns, traditional archery, compound archery. Mm -hmm. So people can choose two mm -hmm. of those that they want to do. And then the next day is women's health and, mm -hmm. and fitness because that's an incredibly important piece of being in the outdoors. Mm -hmm. So I'm bringing in Dr. Hillary Lampers, who's amazing. I love her. I love her. <laughs> She's so good um, to talk about the hormone piece for outdoor women specifically and like how to optimize that. And then everything from like rider fitness, mm -hmm. you know, if you really love horses to um, nutrition, to backpacking, to pain injury and pain management. So we've got different workshops for that theme. And then Friday is all about hunting and trapping. So we've got everything from hound hunting to beginner hunting, to advanced hunting, to trapping, um, thinking about throwing in a glassing workshop in there for people yeah. that don't know how to glass yeah. and so yeah and then the last day is all like processing day so skinning putting up furs um we're gonna process an elk cook the elk learn wild game cooking and then we have a big concert that night 
Oh my so, gosh. This yeah, is like a it's huge gonna be event. Awesome. Yeah. I have like 25 instructors coming in for these different workshops. We're hoping to sell a hundred tickets and bring a hundred women in yeah. and we're all going to camp together and just have a, a great time. Yeah. 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 No, that sounds incredible. And so if you guys want to learn about this camp, you can go to your website, right? BristolBayFitness.com. Is that what it is? Um, well, this has its own separate website, okay. but you can either reach out to me yeah. um, or you'll see it, but it's the Wild Women's Rendezvous. And the reason Wild. I call it rendezvous is because i just love that word rendezvous. <laughs> more than like just a summit or a gathering no, like no, we no. are like rugged and yeah. i want it to be a gathering place for women like us you know yeah. and if you want to connect with other women you could be a beginner if you feel intimidated by hunting yeah. and you're trying to get into it and i've talked to tons of women at this show already that are like oh i'm trying to get into hunting and you know, my husband doesn't really want to teach me. <laughs> I, I feel intimidated, I and I'm I like, I have something for you. <laughs> it's not great if husbands teach no, this anyway. No, don't like, do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. It's, you will fight. It's not. It's not great for your relationship. Don't do it at all. <laughs> have somebody else teach you like you. Just, yeah. Yeah. It's, and I tell women that all the time. They're like, well, I've never went hunting, and I want to learn to shoot a rifle. And I'm like, don't go with your dad. Mm -hmm. Don't go with your husband. Find an instructor and go with them because yeah. it's not, um, it, it, number one, a lot of like dads and grandpas, the level of safety mechanisms that like, you know, <laughs> firearm safety strategies and principles that are employed necessarily aren't like industry standard. Mm -hmm. So it's really good for people to understand like, hey, this is, this is the standard like of safety and this is how we do things, you know, bolt open, mag out. Why? Because you can visually inspect, mm -hmm. whatever. People a lot of times don't walk through that. They just walk up to a gun range with the bolt closed and mm -hmm. like, like, no, like the, your grandpa taught you wrong. That's not how you walk up. You know what I mean? Like, so it's good that you learn properly. Like these mm -hmm. are the steps and, and do it with experts because it's easy as a family to get a little bit um, complacent with yeah. safety. Yeah. With protocol or process, right? It's easy to be like, oh, well, we just do it like this and yeah. we're a little sloppy about it, but it's fine because, you know, I mean, just think about how many people stored a firearm in the corner of their house loaded and just told the kids, you're going to get a spanking if you touch that. I, you know what I mean? Like, right. It's just, I, you know, I, it's just, you know, that might have been how you were raised and grandpa did it, but it doesn't mean you need to learn that from grandpa, right? Yeah. Like, there's new... There's new ways of looking at things. And, mm -hmm. and so anyway, with firearms specifically, I tell women it's better not to. Or they have some guy that wants to give them, you know, this is my 375. Let's go shoot. And it's like, wait, let, maybe we yeah. start you with a 22, right? Like, yeah. Maybe we start you with small caliber where you can mm -hmm. you know, learn how to manipulate the bolt, how to shoulder a rifle, how to have fun with it. And then we step you up in calibers mm -hmm. and, and intensity with recoil and sound yep. and, you know, all of these things to where when it does finally get bigger and louder, <laughs> you're ready for it. And a yeah. lot of it is mental. And so it is. I think camps like this are really important. Plus, um, you know, I, I, and I'm guilty of this too. I don't always do things the best way. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that do things way better than me. And I'd rather learn from those people mm -hmm. that can show me like, okay, I see how you're doing it this way, but let me show you the way I do it. It works really well for me. Mm -hmm. It's a different way. Mm -hmm. And then you might have this, oh, wow, this is a great way, yeah. you know, moment. And so that's what I love about camps like this is, you know, number one, you should never stop learning and you're never too old to learn. Yep. And, um, and learning from new people always gives you fresh perspective. Yep. Um, and it helps you grow and enrich your experience yeah. in shooting or outdoors or everything. Yeah. And I think the intimidation factor for a lot of women is just learning from maybe men. And yeah. I don't mind learning from men because that's what I grew up with. But yeah. a lot of women are, are scared, intimidated yeah. to do that. Or they feel judged if they ask stupid questions mm -hmm. or if they don't do good enough. And so I really wanted to make it a point to make this all for women. Yeah. And all with women instructors yeah. that were experts in that yeah. field. And the other thing I wanted to know is we decided to do it for ages 16 and up. Mm -hmm. So kind of the older yeah. daughters so women can bring their daughters mm -hmm. because there's nothing for them to learn to be exposed. Like a lot mm -hmm. of us weren't introduced into hunting that early on. And yeah. it had connections and other women that we could relate to. We kind of had to figure it out as we got older. And I hear that a lot. Like, oh, yeah, I didn't have the support for my family. Mm -hmm. I figured it out in my 20s, you know. And so you can, like, totally get away. Or you can bring, like, your 17-year-old that's almost an adult mm -hmm. and bring her out and get her exposed to that. Because I'm all about, like, women and children getting mm -hmm. involved in this kind of stuff. 
Yeah, no, this is this is going to be a great camp, and um, I hope all of you go online and look into her camp, look into what you're doing. Um, so people, can they download your app without paying for consulting, or is that a package? No, it's a it's a package. package. Like okay. Just my clients get that. Yeah. Perfect. So go on your website, check it out, yeah. email you, contact mm -hmm. you if yeah. you guys want some help, because it's... I can tell all of you listening, watching, it is, it can, as we all know, it can be extremely overwhelming. Like, mm -hmm. where do I even start? Like, you yeah. might feel so lost in your fitness journey or, like, so overwhelmed with so much to consider. Yeah. That you don't even know where is a good, where do I even start? Like, yeah. you, you know, you feel overwhelmed by it. And, you know, you and coaching them will help people figure out, okay, well, let's start here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll work into yep. these things. Yep. It's just like a mountain, one step yeah. at a time. Yeah. You can't climb the mountain by looking at the top and just getting there. It takes time. I and wish. And if you do it sometimes. right, like <laughs> give yourself a good six months to a year. You're yeah. not going to make changes in no. 12 weeks and be fine. No. Like it could take a year or two for you to get to where you want to be. Yeah. To sustain it and like, yeah. you know, and not keep yo-yoing as you know. So. Yeah. Yeah. Be yeah, prepared no. to like invest time in your, like you're worth the time. You're worth the money. Women yeah. too are like, I can't spend that money on myself. I'm like, really? Like, what is the value? Yeah. What is your value? You're putting a, a literal money value on yourself. Like I'm not worth a couple hundred bucks a month. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You're not, <laughs> yeah. you know, and that's where that self-worth comes in. Like what? Okay. We got to dive deeper. <laughs> Why do you not believe in yourself? Mm -hmm. um, so there's just a lot that goes into it, but yeah, have just take that step. If you can take that first step and you can find somebody that's going to support you in it, mm -hmm. you're going to make changes. How many camps do you have in Alaska this year? I'm doing one because the baby. I was going to do two, mm -hmm. and then I pulled it back to one. And I canceled, like, a lot of my trips this year. I was going to go to Costa Rica. I was going to go to Africa. I was going to, you know, just like, no, but I have a baby. I'm just going to pull back, mm -hmm. you know, like you. I can't put too mm -hmm. much stress on my body or <laughs> it's going to be really bad. So I'm um, doing one Alaska camp. Um, that's in July. I think and I have one Idaho. spot left for that one. And then the Idaho one we are launching this weekend. So, yeah, start yeah. buying tickets. $500 deposit. It's 1800 total for the whole week yeah and, that's and you can and also everything. yep and you can also do a drop-in day if you just can make it one day or you can just make it on the weekend so you can make it work with your schedule it's in southern idaho whether you want to fly or drive um so yeah it's gonna be awesome yeah you're making like it a super welcoming mm -hmm. experience for people to come in and um so the t-shirts that your husband is selling how do people get those um, he actually <laughs> is going to have a link <laughs> where he can buy it online, but he's at the show today, I think with a box <laughs> till he sells out, but it's a Saturday. So he's probably going to sell out because he sold out yesterday in like an hour. <laughs> That's so. so funny. So if you want to get your husband or you really want a DB t-shirt. Yeah. Um, DBE. Dick Bone Enterprises. Yeah. Yeah. You guys can go on their <laughs> website and order one of those too. Uh, I encourage all of you to do that. Um, and then I want people to follow you. So mm -hmm. give everyone you like your handle where to follow you and follow yeah. your journey. Yeah. Instagram is probably the best way to contact me. Tana Sue underscore fit. And uh, we also have a Bristol Bay Retreats page. Just Bristol Bay Retreats all together. Um, and then Bristol Bay Fitness. So those are my three Instagram pages. And then websites, Bristol Bay Retreats, Bristol Bay Fitness. And then this new one, Wild Women's Rendezvous. So. And you're not busy at all, clearly. Not at all. Three <laughs> Instagram pages and three websites. But I'm like you. I'm like a workaholic. I'm like, okay, I'm going to manage my stress. And now I'm going to start a new business. <laughs> you know, that's that's yeah. how and I I'm work. And I'm going to adopt a baby. And then I'm going to take a baby. a baby at the same time. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> well, and you know, like uh, what you're doing though is you're just reprioritizing your life. Yeah. You just and pivot. I think that there's so much, especially for women, there's this culture that tells us we can't be successful and be moms mm -hmm. to some capacity. And it's a lie. Yeah. You know, it's a lie. Like, if you want to be a mom and have a family, you can still have success and you can still have space created in doing the things that you love in the outdoors. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have one or the other. Yeah. Um, you can make it, it helps work. when your kids get older and you have built-in babysitters. Yes, it does. <laughs> but it's not one or the other. It's not that finite, you know. Yeah. You, know, you can make it work. Proof. Something's yeah. got to give. You know, I don't make it to the gym every single day for an hour. Sometimes it's a 15-minute workout with my baby, like I said. Um, some days it's like, okay, we're just going to get sleep today, but you know, something's got to give. And that's why I love to teach women too. I'm like, you can't ex put unrealistic expectations on yourself and expect you to do stuff that like a single person without kids could do. 
Yeah. Like you're not a single person. No. And you have five kids. So this is what your life is realistically going to look like, you know, and your habits that you can focus on now while you're in this phase. Yeah. So the season of their life. And I, I really appreciate that about you because you make it to where everybody feels like, you know, you don't have to be super woman. No. You just have (laughs) to, you know, yeah, just try. One step at a time. Exactly. Yeah. And you don't have to be perfect at everything, but at least get going in the right direction and And never give up never give up on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's such a big deal. Um, when you're out there, what are some of like the mental, do you, do you ever feel like you struggle mentally to like get through a a cold season or a cold moment or where you're Mm -hmm. like, Oh my gosh, I'd rather be snuggling my baby in the house. And do you, do you have like mental things you talk yourself through as a mom that you can give other ladies some like high, high altitude advice on? Yeah, I struggle in the winter because it's dark and it's cold. Um, So there are times that I just want to stay inside. But I think if you're struggling to, like, really do anything or get outside or go on a workout or take a first step, just make it really small and attainable. What's something you can do in two minutes Mm -hmm. that would help you? Mm -hmm. Even if it's deep breathing for two minutes Mm -hmm. or dancing for two minutes Mm -hmm. or going for a two-minute walk. Mm -hmm. Like, what's that one thing that you need to do? Do it in two minutes. Mm -hmm. And that at least gets you started, Mm -hmm. especially if you're feeling depressed, if you're not feeling motivated, if you're struggling to take that first step. Don't make this big thing like I need to work out for an hour. You're not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like two minutes. Mm -hmm. Do do squats for two minutes. And those little habits will build up. Yeah. And you'll get stronger and stronger. And Mm -hmm. like I know for me, like last year when my husband would be like, let's go to the gym. And I'd be like, ugh. Because I hurt so bad afterwards. I didn't want to. Yeah. It was really hard to. And now I'm like, let's go. <laughs> so you have to build that yep. back. Like at one point in my life, I was like raring to go all the time. Mm-hmm. And then I, as my body changed or as my hormones changed and I changed and I felt different, it was hard for me to have that ambition. Mm-hmm. But just stick with it, right? If you stick with it and you find that repetition and you find that consistency, eventually it It doesn't get easier, but you get stronger. Mm -hmm. Um, You get more powerful, and then it gets easier, right? And because you're transformative on the inside, on the outside, it does get easier. And Mm -hmm. once you especially start seeing or feeling results, Mm -hmm. that's when that light bulb will go off. And you are like, okay, this is worth it. Yeah. 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 And hire help if you need to. We're all human. I I just hired a coach, too, because I'm like... I'm in the busiest phase of my life. I got a baby. I've got all this going on. I need somebody to make sure I'm holding myself accountable. Mm-hmm. I'm a coach and I hire coaches. Like yeah. Sometimes I, I go through those phases where I need extra help and I need someone to tell me what to do. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, and that's you know? great. And we aren't, we're all fallible, right? And, yeah. and there's counselors out there that have counselors. <laughs> like, yeah. We're like human, right? We're like, human and, and we all, you Just because we're an expert doesn't mean we can't learn. Or <laughs> well, it's a hand up, not a hand out, right? Like yeah. you need somebody to give you a hand up. Where the, and, and, and a lot of these lifestyle characteristics are perishable traits. Mm-hmm. So meaning if you don't practice them as a part of your daily life it's easy to fall out and then it's hard to get back in yeah so maintaining that to where it becomes like this is just what we do like this morning my alarm didn't go off I was up my body is like okay it's time to go because I'm so used to that habit of getting up going to the gym Mm -hmm. and and you'll get there too where you have that Mm -hmm. energy and that vigor and it might take time you know Mm -hmm. before it becomes like a natural habit for Mm -hmm. you yeah, it does. So, yeah. Um, anything else you want to add to our listeners, viewers, about what you guys are doing? Or I don't anything? think so. No? <laughs> I think we no. covered a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Yeah, uh, I, This is a busy expo, and we're literally here an hour and a half before the show <laughs> opens so we can do this podcast because <laughs> it's such a crazy weekend at Hunt yeah. Expo. And I'm trying to do all my podcasting before a show opens because it is so insane. And I appreciate you getting up Thank early you. and like, no, coming you. in <laughs> here and, and doing this with me yeah. um, for our listeners and the viewers. And appreciate all of you for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. Shout out to our sponsors. We got Ruger Marlin, SCI, Onyx Hunt, Wilderness Athlete. I want you all to go to my website, pursuethewild.com. Uh, you can watch all my videos, my podcast. Also click the discount tab. My partnerships have some great discounts out there for you guys. I want you to take advantage to get the best deals you can. And if you like this podcast please share it with someone um, and like it and and leave a comment below Um, 
If there's any questions you guys have, put them in the comments, share it with your friends, and uh, give Tana a call and reach out or email, I yeah. should say, uh, to her if you guys are find yourself in a place where you could use a little coaching for whatever reason. So thank you all again. When conditions get tough on a mountain hunt, your gear must be tougher. Making every opportunity count means selecting equipment that will not fail. Any condition, anywhere, Hornady Outfitter ammunition is designed to perform. Available in a wide range of cartridges from 243 to 375 Ruger. When you're looking for a hard hitting, deep penetrating bullet and cartridge that performs in the most rugged environments, look no further than Hornady Outfitter ammunition. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.